Hi everyone, my name is Nicola and I am simply a stitcher. Welcome back to my channel. Welcome here if you are new, welcome back if you are returning. And today is, ooh, it's a bit of a day. It is the 19th of April, Tuesday, the 19th of April. And we've just had the Easter Bank holiday here in the UK. And today I thought I would do a little stitch with me. Now the piece that I'm working on at the moment, you will have seen if you're on uh, Instagram or indeed from my last stitch with me. I'm currently still working on Avarice which is Heaven and Earth Designs, artwork by Marta Dalek. And if I remember to tell my husband, he is putting a picture in around about now. And today I just thought I'm on a lunch break from work. Let's go and have a little stitch with me. Okay. So um, at the moment uh, we are zoom in a little bit uh, we are 79.82 percent completed on this piece which is fabulous um, it is getting ever closer towards the finish and I have to say I am delighted uh, with how it's turning out um, if you've seen on my Instagram um, I've worked on this for a couple of weeks now and um, what I've been doing is sort of kind of, kind of getting all of the gems around sort of the outside move that up you can see one there those gems I got those finished over the weekend the little swines they were because they were very confetti heavy but you know we got there we got there in the end so yeah so I just a couple of small adjustments there, get my filming angle right. Um, I've got this on my Lowry, so you might hear a few creaks. I don't know what it is. I think I've, it's because I've not got the base weighted down enough. Um, I'm hearing one or two creaks from the Lowry stand. So there we go. Um, my phone's telling me I don't have an awful lot of recording time. I have a total of 35 minutes um, because of memory, etc, etc. But let's see what we can put in between now and then, eh? So, yeah. So, I hope everybody had a nice Easter break. Whether or not it was, you know, you, you do any sort of religious observance or not um for me it was just nice to have four consecutive days off work and spend a little time with family um we're all doing okay new job is still okay i have my wobbles but it doesn't everybody um but largely i am enjoying what i'm doing um getting to talk to people talk to brokers and things because i work in you know within mortgages now um it's interesting i learn something literally every day and that is of course is is a real good thing if you can you know at the end of your working day say do you know what i learned something today it's a bonus isn't it so i kind of wanted to this is kind of like a prelude to my next floss tube um next floss tube will be coming out on the first of may i'm hoping to have this piece near and i finished by then um, although, you know, I might switch out. I don't know. It depends on how much of this skirt um, I uh, managed to sort of steal myself into doing this voluminous sort of gold skirt on this piece. It's it's quite a lot. Um, I also um, have made a couple of purchases this month. 
do excuse it if you hear my phone buzzing through this um i have a motion sensor security camera and it goes off every time a car passes the house or somebody passes the house it's quite quiet at the moment but you know um it's a good job it's not school time actually so yeah i've made a few purchases um and then of course the next floss tube i'm going to be looking at what i'm doing oops split that block for mania I know this sort of isn't really a sort of a stitch mania group or anything like that anymore. But still, I want to sort of use May. Oh, flipping heck. Can't get this back through. Uh, potentially to to focus on a piece and, and try and get in a finish. Whether it's this one or the black cap, I don't know. I um, haven't decided that yet. Oh, it's still not done it. Do you know what? let's fudge it there we go <laughs> whether it's this one or the black cat i haven't decided um like i said i'm up to eight nearly 80 percent on this now so by my calculation if each day i'm doing about half a percent i've got 40 days on this left so which is a fair a fair crack isn't it really Let's have a look. 240,000 stitches and I've done 191,560. So I've got 48,000 and some stitches to go, um, which is working on a thousand a day, 48 days. So depending on what I get finished this month, I doubt if this piece would be finished during May. <laughs> What you say? You've got some bank holidays in May. Yes, we have. We have the early May bank holiday, the 1st of May. I think it's the 1st on the Monday. I could be wrong. Um, and then we'll have the late May bank holiday. But during the late May bank holiday, we will actually be away. Because it's, it's the week commencing the 30th of May, we're actually going away on holiday. And our bank holidays that week, because of the Queen's Jubilee, instead of being on the Monday, we're getting an extra one, and it's going to be the Thursday and the Friday. So, yeah. Um, so my bank holidays are kind of spoken for. Um, the next thing on the agenda is... Uh, Andy and Village Idiot. Um, I'm going to try and go out and do a little bit more with him because he kind of likes having me tag along, as it were. So, just mark these stitches off. So, I'm going to try and do a bit more Village Idiot stuff uh, with Andy, which will be quite nice because it'll give us something together, won't it? That doesn't look very focused. Why isn't that very focused? I think that's about as good as we're going to get, chaps. Um, yeah, so I'm going to do a bit more with him. Um, you know, go out and about and stuff, which I know he enjoys. He enjoys having me with him. Got some thread, nine seven six. Um. And that's going to start this Saturday. So this Saturday is a stitching day. I'm pretty much binning off. Unless I can take, you know, maybe my gecko gem with me in the car. Um, so, yeah. Um, I've got another day in the office coming up. Um, I've got just a four day week this week with it being a bank holiday it's just days are kind of running into one another at the moment it's, it's it's one of those but hey we'll get through i'm sure okay so at the moment the house is not quiet i have um two of the three are in Andy's not here. Normally on a Tuesday I'd have the house to myself because um, the girls are in school, stroke, college or placement or whatever. 
when Andy's off out filming. But not today, because it's school holiday. So I've got two of the children in, and one of whom has, has actually gone back to bed. I know it sounds ridiculous with it being nearly one o'clock in the afternoon, but we had a bit of a drama last night. There was a massive, and I mean massive, spider in her bedroom. And she refused to go to bed in her bedroom because the spider kept getting away. Um, we tried to do the uh, disposal by Hoover and it ran off. <laughs> so there's a great big whacking spider running about. And of course she's been downstairs and she's not slept much all night. Uh, she's just sort of catnapped. So I've sent her and I said, look, go and get in my bed and uh, go and have some sleep. Um, you know, kids are awful and they haven't had enough sleep. And sometimes it's just best to say, look, you know, go and do what you need to do. Um, we'll deal with the, the spider later. So... That's that. The cat's knocking about somewhere. Don't know where. I've been in work today, this morning so far. It's been good. Enjoyed myself. Um, it's going well, I have to say. I mean, uh, I'm on a lot of time. I'm on telephones. I'm on calls. Um, past my quality coaching and stuff so but then again I mean I'd always had the soft skills for the for the phone calls anyway um I spoke to one or two people this morning who reading between the lines so I'm pretty sure they wish they were still on holiday or bank holiday but you know alas not the case um I, I kind of still wish I was because I had a wonderful day yesterday um me and Andy went out ourselves uh, for a few hours and I caught up with my best friend and had a cup of coffee with her and a natter and a, a bit of a giggle and a laugh you know just one of them chats that lifts the spirits um, and then uh, me and Andy went out and had a lovely dinner which was rather nice so you know it's, it was it was a nice day we enjoyed it So yeah, it's kind of weird because it doesn't feel like I've got much to say, yeah, but I probably have, but you know, um, I don't know if any of you guys are following me on Instagram, um, but there's a lady on Insta um, who is also, she's, she got herself a gecko rouge kit and she got it because she'd seen me doing the black cat and she loved it. Um, so she went off and chose herself a kit and you know you know who you are um, and you know she's doing a phenomenal job on this piece uh, working it via a paper pattern for me now it's pattern keeper all the way I, I you know I'll still work off paper but I prefer the pattern keeper um, and you know there's quite a few people who I'm following at the minute on Instagram who've got some gorgeous stuff that's on the go um and a very much a variance in subject as well you know we've got kind of the, the the sort of the weird and wonderful stuff to fantasy stuff to fan art and landscapes and creatures and you know the little you know domestic animals and samplers I, I i love looking at instagram and looking at the variance and you know the huge different projects that people um, let's have a look out the window. I can hear somebody out there with a big gob. I dare they'd be talking over my stitch with me. Yeah, I, I love to see the huge variances in in what people are working. It, it kind of inspires me. I mean, I've got a couple of samplers in my stash. I've got one of them's my unicorn chart. Um. I've got a few bits knocking about that I want to do and I've got some non-full coverage stuff and so on and so forth. And I just, I, I love it. You know, I love to see what those are working on and try not to go and spend a ton of money myself. 
although having said that I still want the speciality threads for Capricorn I've not got them yet four months into the year and they're still pretty much out of stock everywhere I want to get them all from the same place rather than pay one and then postage and then go to another sender and postage and, and so on if I can get them all in one place and pay one lot of postage great because otherwise they're just gonna I mean these threads are five pounds something a skein anyway a skein skein however you call it the last thing I want is three lots of like two or three quid postage on top you know it's a lot of money um so yeah I just I'm just waiting so there we go I don't know if you can hear them outside. I can, and I just think, shut up. Mm. It's normally pretty quiet on here, but it's because it's half term, isn't it? So, I don't know if somebody's talking to somebody or seeing them off for whatever. No idea. I keep thinking I'm hearing them saying goodbye, but nobody seems to be moving. Yeah, so this piece has kind of sucked me in and I was kind of looking, I was talking to Andy earlier on in the year and I'm like, yeah, I'm going to do a piece a week and do a rotation. <laughs> That's not worked. I've barely touched Pandemic all year. I think I've had a, a light sort of, you know, half a dozen stitches touch on it. That's about it. I haven't touched the Realm of Middle Earth map for quite some time. I still haven't FFO'd the fellowship. Um, I've got a lot to do, but you know, uh, I, I just love this one at the minute. This is kind of my my passion. But you know what? I said the same thing when I put the cat back on, and I said the same thing when I put Mary Princess back on. I said, yeah, I love these. I'm kind of hooked on them. Guess that's what. That's just how it goes isn't it there we go let's fasten my thread on just there I don't know if anybody's seen what I'm, I, I do oh god this it's terrible the focus is awful because what I tend to do is get the end of the thread and put it over and then push it through or fingers and thumbs. End of the thread, put it over the the, the attached part. Oh, do you know, I'm going to knock this camera to merry hell here. Right. There's my thread in my needle. And the bit at the top there is the bit that's attached to my work. I've got a loose end here. So I'm going to put the loose end over the top. And then I'm going to use that finger and tuck it in. So it goes through the loop and it's almost like knotting the thread to my needle but it's not quite it's it is going to secure it there but i'm going to leave it like a loop like that i mean if you can see that will it focus will it balls you can see it there can't you it's like a loop so it's not tight so when I pull it, it still looks just like a length of thread that's doubled. And it just stops the thread from slipping off my needle when it gets to small length. Ooh, it's all of a sudden gone quiet outside. Hopefully that's the shape of things to come. Okay. You might hear that loose knot going through the fabric. You might not. But if you pull it tight, you'll never get your needle off it. You'd have to sort of use another needle to, to loosen the thread in the eye of the, the needle that it's on. Um, but, you know, there we go. Um, I did have somebody ask me a, a, a question. 
and this actually might be a good opportunity to talk about slippage um let me go in as close as i can let's see if we can manage to turn it off there right let's talk about slippage okay now you can see here where my thread has just come out okay i always start in the top right hand corner of my fabric now with this stitch here if i was just to do the individual stitch if i went top right to bottom left and then top left that would potentially pull and it's not covering the whole square so what i do is let me just go back through this so i can see look let me just dig that out so the way i work out how i'm going to to do the second arm of the stitch a bit of fluff there coming up now is via is via how the weft thread is laying okay so i'll go top right to bottom left and to prevent the slippage i'll make that the back straight part of this stitch be parallel with the weft so the weft is is running horizontally it's, good. it's running over the top there so the bottom part and then that stops it from slipping and then the next stitch because it's right next i'd normally start in the top right i'm going to do it the opposite way so i'm starting the bottom left and as you can see the weft for this one is top to bottom so when i put in the second half of the stitch i want to come up i want to go from either top to bottom or bottom to top which hole i choose so that stitch will now not slip don't know if that makes sense i think you probably have to see me do a few to kind of make sense of the way that i'm doing it so like with this one i always come up top right the thread is laying top to bottom so i'm going to go bottom to top with the back of the stitch and it's not going to slip now this one again i normally come up top right but i've just gone down there so i'm going to have to go bottom left to top right and because the thread is laying horizontal It like that so that's that they are not going to slip because it's so easy to sort of get thread slipping you know like with this one if i if i decided to go that way it'll just pull and it'll it'll just literally you can come down that vertical that horizontal you can just slip down that vertical thread at the back of that between that and the horizontal one and and that's no good because you end up with literally like half a stitch and you're working on tiny counts anyway so always make it so your stitch on the back your horizontal or your vertical runs parallel with the horizontal or vertical on the front i don't know if it's going to make sense i really don't hey it is what it is but you know what looking at it that closely it's a lot clearer isn't it um so there we go and if of course you you kind of can't remember whether you're supposed to be doing a horizontal or a vertical just look at the what's underneath and work the opposite so 
There we go. Hope he's going to go a bit balmy because it's going to be in two parts. Did I do that one right? I don't think I did. See, even I can't remember some days. That's it. Needs to be that way to stop the slippage. It, it's only a problem on even weave fabrics. I mean, if I was working Ada, it's always top right, bottom left, top left, bottom right. And that's how I construct my stitches. So, I find that when you're doing row stitching, as long as you keep your tension even and you're not pulling that stitch a little bit too tight, I don't have many problems at all with slippage. I, I might occasionally, but it's nothing that can't be, you know, kind of resolved with, you know, your needle and a little nudge of the stitch. So, there we go. I quite like it being this close up. It looks good. And you can see them gorgeous golden colours as well. That's in the wrong hole. Oh, excuse me. I do beg your parsnips. Just had a little gas escape. So, if it's top to bottom, when I do, I've done the first half of the stitch, I call top to bottom at the back or bottom to top, whichever is parallel. And it, 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 for me, it works well and it stops, you know, having that, that sort of slippage effect. So this one, because it's horizontal, I'm going horizontal at the back. Finish that stitch off. Now, so that one, I would normally go horizontal. Lovely. That one. And that one now. Have I got enough floss to do a bit of floss chicken? I think probably I have. I'll get three stitches out of that. One. And I don't always stick to the uh, to the rule, but generally speaking, with it, I think you know my way of sort of stopping slippage is it, it works it, I'm just going to go right down in the eye because the thread's getting a little bit short there we go it might not work for everybody you know my starting and ending method um, doesn't work for everybody um, it's just what you're used to isn't it I suppose Oh, look at them gorgeous colours. Beautiful, aren't they? Yeah, we've got like golds and yellows and creams. And there's even some slight pinkish hues in this. Um, and when I was doing the main uh, gems, you know, we even had some like... And the skin, her skin as well. I had some burgundies and things. And it was beautiful. Absolutely beautiful. So... Yeah, right, number six. Da, ba, 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 ba. Eight, six, seven, eight, two. Okay. Right, so fourth row up. Put them away. Fourth one in. Ah. Okay, just to stop the slippage. This might actually be a better way of showing it. So I've come up top right. It's across the, the the top thread is going left to right. So I'm going to make the cross in this square here. And then when I want to go up back up to the front for the other leg of the cross I'm going to go left to right behind and then complete my cross and that thread as you can see that cross has got no slippage neither has that one neither has that one and all of these crosses that are on their own because of me using that method they're not slipping 
I'll just get rid of my tail. There we go. Oh, hi, cat. Cat's come to say hello. Now, I'm going to do this the little patch here where we've got some little rows. Again, we're going to do everything we can to avoid slippage. So, because the second one is horizontal, we're going to horizontal up. Hopefully, right there we go. Probably going to talk a complete load of bunkum now. So there we go. This this piece is actually being worked on twenty five count Lugana, um, which is lovely. It's a lovely fabric to work with. It it's very soft, and and I do find though that I am managing to to pierce the Lugana from time to time, which is annoying, but not sort of terribly so. So yeah. This is this is so. This is what happens when I do a row, and because I'm using the back back hand as well to guide the the floss. I'm sort of trying to keep an even tension across the row, and then making sure that with the end stitch, I'm using my keep it parallel back and front rule. Then. It stops those end stitches from slipping as well. And it's the bottom part of the stitch that's going to slip, if anything. The bottom half. With the top half, it, you, you know, I mean, I'm still quite careful on how I place the top half. But it's the bottom that's mainly going to be affected. I hope that answers the question about slippage. I really do. Um... I might not be using the right words. I'm not a teacher. I'm not a trainer. I was never, uh, you know, sort of that good. <laughs> but I do hope that it answers, uh, uh, you know, any questions that I might get. I did ask, have somebody ask me as well about using my start and end technique and on work that's been tent stitched, stitched, stitched. <laughs> I uh, haven't, uh, haven't even looked at that yet, I'll be honest. Um, my New Year New Start, which again is a possibility, it might be on the board for Mania. I'm hoping to tent stitch it. Um, if I do, I shall be working out a start and end method. Because I'm lazy, I don't like to flip my work over. I'm thoroughly bone idle. But there we go. Now, I keep saying it in my floss tubes. So I'm going to do two stitch with me's. And normally I'd do them. I'd have done this one a week ago. <laughs> but I didn't get a chance. Um, hence this one is going to be late up. Um, so what I'd like to do is, given that I can stitch on this camera, this phone, so closely to the work. What I'd like to do is do another stitch with me, but perhaps with some music behind it instead of my chat. I know that people like the chat ones, but I haven't, I have, I run out of things to say. And, you know, I mean, I don't want it to sort of be, you know, just air. <laughs> um, I'd sooner have a little bit of gentle music in the background. Um, and then, you know, just so you can sit and stitch along with me. So, I'm hoping to do that in the next few days. I might, you know, switch out a project and... And, uh, you know, do it on something else other than this. I don't know. So we'll have to see. So, yeah. I'm 
my Lowry stand keeps moving. I, I think, like I said, it's because I've not got the base anchored down properly. It's not sort of keeping balance uh, properly, as it were. So, our apologies if you are feeling seasick right now. Okay. That's another little bit done. I've been up since uh, about seven this morning. I had a bit of a lie in. Uh, which is unusual for me because normally I'm up at, at the crack of dawn. Um, but yeah, I got up about seven uh, this morning and thought, you know, I'm going to do a little bit of stitching. And uh, I'm about 500 stitches in so far on the day. Because I start work at nine, which means that I don't have to get off my backside until... Uh, you know, 10 to 9 to switch my computer on and, and log in. Um, the advantage of working from home, eh? Um, and uh, it, it's, um, you know, a good couple of hours of sort of peace time. And when I'm feeling fresh in the morning, it's a good time to stitch. Um, an hour now, uh, I should probably get in about half an hour or so later before my tea. Uh, then, um, from, I'll have probably a good two, three hours, at least three hours crack at it this evening. Um, fast heading towards that 80% mark, 79.87% at the moment. So it'll be 80% by day's end. Um... Yeah, I'm just, I'm loving it. And because it's my oldest whip, I want it done. And I've said no new starts until I finish this whip or a whip, whether it be this one or the cat, you know. The cat is less percentage wise, but of course it's also less stitches wise. It's about, let me have a look at the pattern. Okay. So I'm 66.44% through on the cap. So 37,600 of 56,594 stitches done. So I've got about 19,000 to do, which for me is 19 days. So... Maybe that's going to be the next thing that I pull out. Maybe that one might be a, a stitch with me. Oh, gosh, we keep losing me out of the picture here because my flipping lower keeps moving. Stay still. There we go. I've probably done getting on for a hundred, if not slightly more, in this short time. This I'm just filling in this little section. It's good when we can get lots of areas of block stitching in one colour. And I think with this skirt, with it being very colourful, lots of different shades in it. It's not really confetted, it's just that there's lots of different colours and it's like a clump of this colour or a clump of that colour. And I never really talked about this piece being one of seven, there's a set of seven. I think, I, oh, I mind you, I might have done. And uh, of course I want to do the next one which will be Envy because I'd like to do them in alphabetical order. <laughs> Uh, so yeah, um, I'm going to do that one as well, I'm going to do them all. Oh, 
just before we do go, um, my floss tube will also hopefully have a wee bit of an, an announcement in it. I am hoping in the very not too dim and distant future to open an Etsy shop. Um, I have a daughter who's a budding artist and between me and Andy we're able to create patterns and do the editing and, and, and all the rest of it. Looked at a website, website's just too expensive and it's out of reach at the moment but we're looking at doing an Etsy shop so do keep your ears and eyes peeled for that. More information on that in the next flush tube if all goes well. Anyway, with that, I am now almost out of time. So it's time for me to say uh, goodbye and thanks for watching. And, um, you know, we will see you in the next one. And I hope the slippage lesson, as it were, was, was okay. Um, if you do have any questions, pop them in down below. Any comments, I love to read the comments, uh, anything at all that, you know, you want me to do or look at or, you know, whatever. Just let me know. Um, give me a follow on Instagram and if you've not subscribed on here, please consider doing so. It does help me a lot. It doesn't cost you anything, um, but it helps me stay visible. So that's it. Take care. Thanks for watching. Happy stitching and I'll see you in my Flossy update. Bye for now.